Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the February 5th, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Ed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that, well, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, but much more important than that. And during this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone and dial on in 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, well, we've got you covered there. Let those fingers do the walking. Go ahead, send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, in our Tigers Den, well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, we've got all the indices in the green, <clears throat> with the exception of the spot volatility index. Dow's up over 1%, 340 points. S&P, a tenth of a percent, 26 points. The NASDAQ 100 taking a breather, basically flat, up a couple of points. Russell's up uh, over 1% or 21 points. Semis are up 34 so just a mean and green across the board. Spot politics is still well above its 50-day exponential moving average. She's trading at 15.44. Gold's up six bucks. Silver's up three pennies. Light sweet crude up a buck 88. Natural gas down a penny. Leading the charge dollar-wise. The upside it is booking holdings up 54 bucks, nearly three percent. Humana up twenty dollars, six percent. AutoZone up one and six tenths percent or seventeen dollars. The downside Tesla, the big. Mover off 18%, down 163. Chipotle off 29. Mercado Libre down uh, 27. And uh, let's go to our first question that came in here. This one coming in from Phil. And Phil wants to take a look at, and Phil, by the way, thanks for everything that you sent to me. I'll look at this sometime this afternoon when I get a uh, moment of time and respond. But uh, Phil did have two very specific questions about two different instruments. One is rig. So let's go take a look at the chart on rig. He's long rig, and I applaud that uh, decision decision here and you'll see why folks when we take a look at the chart if you look at the bottom here when I say the bottom if you take a look at the bottom right hand corner of my chart you're gonna see really two different patterns that you and I like to trade and those are the rose momentum indicator signal well what Phil got on February 3rd out there was both the TD nine count confirmation as well as the bullish reversal candle that's a bullish engulfing candle confirming that roads momentum indicator signal now yesterday you had a gap to the upside so that becomes your second bullish candle in a row and then today we've got a bull separating line you've got the three for out here and on top of that Phil price is trading above Stevie's red line that's priced at 506 we're trading at 512 so close above 506 today really 509 which is the top of its daily profile i uh you should be off to the races now the races inside of rig your next resistance level would be five dollars and 72 cents that is where price most recently broke down that's what the daily time frame chart so a uh, nice trade there smart decision if we take a look at the uh, weekly time frame chart do i have anything out here no but price right now is taking on its Oscillator on change line at just above it. So you'd certainly like to see it close above that come the end of the week. Monthly chart, obviously, we're brand new into the month out here. So there's not much that uh, we have. Price has been moving lower, doing less relative energy. But the daily time frame chart, uh, Phil, looks uh, really good out there. And that's on ticker symbol RIG. Your other one was U-R-E-U-R-N. So let's uh, go ahead and take a look at uh, this. Uh, get this thing here populated. Let's see where we're at with regard to its uh, wave counts and everything. Uh, looks like uh, 
So you're long this. So in this case here, although it's got the TD nine count pattern, it was bar number seven that made the low out there. Uh, price right now is run right up in resistance at Stevie's red line, 1047 out there. So if this is only a counter trend rally, this in essence is where price would stop. Um, I don't have really an A to B equals CD pattern that I could draw here. I mean, I could draw it, but what we don't have is the bearish reversal, uh, is the bullish reversal candle. So I'm not as tickled about EURN at this stage here, but I would be more tickled if price would close over Stevie's red line, currently priced at 1045. Let's go see what the weekly and the monthly time frame charts show us here. So on the weekly time frame chart, not a lot of information here uh, that I can share with you pattern wise or anything. Let me look at the monthly time frame chart uh, for this. Uh, not enough data actually here for me to do that. So we'll just simply go back to the daily. I certainly like rig um, concerned about EUR and just simply the lack of any kind of bullish reversal candles and the bottoming tools that I like. But best of luck and thanks so much for writing in again. I will respond back to you uh, later in the uh, day. No other questions that we have. No, I take, well, we do have some questions. I take that back uh, inside the Tiger's Den. So let me go to those. One's coming from uh, Mr. Bill, who wanted to take a look at the 30-minute uh, time frame chart for the NQ. Now, Mr. Bill, I, were you you say the your your TD counts are slightly different than mine. Uh, here's what I've got. I don't know if they're different or not. Maybe referring to the post inside the Tiger's Den this morning. So what we saw here, we, we saw the NQ. Here's the 30 minute time frame chart. We can see the roads momentum indicator topping signals out here. Uh, those formed at about five o'clock this morning when we saw that little bearish reversal candle out here. And uh, if we take a look what price actually did. So remember, whenever there's a topping pattern, the responsibility of sellers is to push price down to support. Now, with regard to support, the very first thing you want to do is to stay with inside your time frame. So on this chart right here, uh, what we can see is 93.29.25 was a level of support. How do we know that was level of support? That was the low of the TD nine count pattern to the upside, and that becomes breakout support. Now, as price inside the NQ was pulling back to it just to prove that it was support, or at least that buyers were going to go ahead and defend that level, look what you got. You got in, in three bars. So the first one was at 11 o'clock. So it was shortly after that, Mr. Bill, when I posted that comment, I said 93.29 is held. It was a hammer candle out there, right? Hammer candles, the market trying to hammer out a bottom. You then get a bullish engulfing and followed up by another hammer candle out there. Now, what price did was it bounced right up into resistance. That was the top of its daily profile. Did it hit it to the tick? No, but it was really darn close out here. So what we have going on inside of the NQ right now is a little bit of a consolidation, trading in between support. We'll call it 93.29 and resistance 93.75 out there. So these are the uh, the counts you can see with the counts that are on my system. But if that's what you were referring to, then it was just simply price pulling back. Not that we had a TD9 count or any other kind of bottom, just price pulling back to breakout support on the 30 minute time frame. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We get back, let's go take a look at some daily time frame charts. Let's go get a feel for what the market's communicating to you and I, 114 in the afternoon. We'll be right back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Task Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow up 336, S&P 26, NASDAQ off uh, two points out here. So let's go take a look at the uh, daily time frame charts out there. I know Peter's driving in the car. I want to take a look at the ES Mini VIX and so forth. So let's do all of that. Let's start by taking a look at the ES Mini chart, see what we can learn out here. Now, what we can see uh, is that the ES Mini so far top with wave number seven, letter G out there. In fact, I was looking at the Tesla chart for folks in the uh, den earlier, and uh, it's got a uh, letter G for the so wave number G for the daily, the weekly, and the monthly out there. So uh, that high that we've seen uh, yesterday, or, yeah, yes, is probably a fairly solid high for a while out there. But uh, letter, letter, uh, letter G, wave number seven out here, can be where markets identify tops and bottoms. Okay, so we've got that top in place. That high hasn't been taken out. We can see that price is beginning to move higher, doing less relative energy. Now, it's used, not using the high of that uh, letter G for a very specific reason. That's not, that's not the tool that Stevie developed. That's not the proprietary tool that Stevie developed out here. So price is beginning to move higher with less relative energy, but that alone is just a, a warning sign. It's not something that you would say, oh, my goodness, uh, the markets are going to crash or nothing along those lines. It needs a bearish reversal signal. But here's what's really important. If this was only a counter trend rally, and you'll know at the end of the day, I do not know where the ES mini is going to close at day's end or the S&P 500. So this applies to both. But what we are taking a look at, if this was only a counter trend rally, yesterday's candle was exactly the way that it would look, not from the standpoint that it was so wide ranging bar, the mere fact that price was repelled by Stevie's oscillator and change line, that green line on my chart. If price is above that, the mere fact that the line is green, our chart updating guys in the production room could you please get this chart up on the screen please 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 um so i i don't know mr bill certainly on tiger tv if you peek in there i've got to guess that that's what's uh, playing right now um uh, but what you should see out here is the fact that uh, price is above stevie's green line that right now that's priced at 3308 and change out there. Let's just call it 3308. If price closes above that, first the green line tells us that our price oscillator is above zero. That alone is a bullish condition. But when we have a rising price oscillator above zero, which is the condition we have right now, that is also bullish. The only way that the ES Mini could get even more bullish out here 
is for price to close above the top of its profile, its daily profile. So let's just take a quick peek at that so you understand where price is likely targeting. The top of its profile, that would be the left-hand panel of the charts that we're looking at right now. And the ES Mini shows the top of that box at 33.37.50. If you see, so if, if if you're short, I can say, okay, fine, you're not getting that signal, quite frankly, from the daily chart right now, but it's a daily chart, the day's not over. If price does close above that, what I want you to anticipate at a minimum is that price is going to go at least target and test 33, 37.50. Now, you may be short the S&P and, you know, one of the ETFs out there, and this test could take uh, place overnight. But if you show up, let's say tomorrow morning, and price is trading above 33, 37.50. You better have a really good reason to stay with that short position out here. That's the ES Mini. Now, you don't have to just stop there, right? It's always good to understand what's going on one step above, one step below uh, as we're flying this uh, nice um, supersonic jet out here. If we take a look at the weekly time frame chart, remember Stevie likes to see two bars. If you break through support or resistance, I like to see two bars out here. Well, if we take a look at last week's action inside the ES Mini, the first close below Stevie's green line in quite some time. But where is it trading now on the weekly time frame? Back above it. On a weekly basis, look, there is nothing more bullish, nothing more bullish than price trading above resistance and a rising price oscillator above zero. Well, if we go back to take a look at the ES Mini, the weekly, the weekly top of its profile is 33.15, called 33.16 out there. So if on Friday you've got to close above that, what the weekly time frame chart for the ES Mini is communicating to you and I is it wants to at least go tag that 33.73 area, that 1 to 1 A to B equals CD to the upside, and I would not suggest to you that it would stop there. So conditions inside the S&P 500 via taking a look at the ES Mini, the daily and the weekly, are are, are bullish, not not to the extent of being uber bullish. The weekly is the daily just has a little bit of work before it can prove itself to you. Now, if you step down one level, I would call one level, we go to the five hour time frame chart out here. What you'll see is that you do have a TD nine count top pattern that is forming. It looks like it'll form. I believe this five hour time frame chart uh, bar closes at 2 p.m. So pretty good chance we'll get a now that high in this pattern can form a bars eight, nine or 10. So it could be going into the close that could be that high out there. We know that price has made its way back to an area where selling began. So on the five hour chart, there's nothing bearish about the five hour chart as we speak right now. It's above all support levels, top of its profile. Uh, you can see Stevie's red line turned green. So that means its price oscillator is above zero out there. It formed the Rose Momentum Indicator bottom pattern out here. So this is still bullish. The only aspect uh, that the and what the S and P 500 really needs it needs that uh, confirmation that confirmation coming from the spot volatility index and the spot volatility index now it's back below its upper Bollinger band now it's not your typical Bollinger band uh, Stevie doesn't really do anything typically right because uh, you, you know I learned a long time ago if you kind of do like average you're going to get less than average. But let's not go there. Back below, it's uh, 50 to 1 is the setting, by the way, for that Bollinger Band, the top of which is 1558. Now there's a really good chance that what price is going to do, spot volatility, that is, is set its sights on the 50-day exponential moving average. And that's at 1429. And if it can close below that, then odds favor it's going all the way back down to the bottom in the 1207 area. And it won't be until we see that occur where we would see that next high. Now, we can't make that blanket statement right now because price is above its 50-day exponential moving average. So it says that the markets could be a little bit brittle out here. But look, if you look just on the very right-hand panel of my screen, we talked about this a few days ago. I did notice it as it was happening my mistake, but it was really as of last Friday, we were getting that ratio read between the spot volatility and its three-month counterpart that had gotten to above one, it was 1.01, and it moved right down below at the very next trading session, and that has been in the past a sign of a bottom. You want to put that together with just simply the normal seasonal cycle that we have. I can't show you my, I mean, I could, but I, I don't have it handy is the only reason why I would say I can't show it to you. Where did I put the other? Oh, here's the seasonal cycle. Here's our seasonal cycle charts out here. It appears that the high inside the Dow, which would typically take place around January 6th, came in nine days later. 
But the bottom, which typically forms on January 30th, came in what would appear to be one day earlier out there. So the spot volatility index, which you and I, we looked at this, we did this live. Remember, we looked at the at the VIX out there and um, shoot, I don't have. Well, I know what I could do. I could just do it right here because it'll pop up here in the next few seconds before we go to this break. So let me go ahead and get that out here. Uh, Shift V I X. And then we'll go back to the daily chart. And um, I had it someplace else, too. I probably do. I'm just not looking at it. But look at this TD nine count top out here inside the spot volatility index. We've seen this four, I can't remember, four or five times in the last uh, five, four or five years out here. And each time they've worked at identifying the top spot volatility index. We'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking to find the path that leads to maximizing profits while decreasing risk, then now is a great time to try out Dave White's daily trading service, The Path of Least Resistance. Through the use of options and equity trades, Dave advises his subscribers on a daily basis of the current market conditions and what possible trade setups are on the horizon. The Path of Least Resistance is published every trading morning, often with updates intraday when initiating trades or closing out positions. Dave White has advised his clients of some outstanding winning options and equity trades in recent months, and now is a great time to try it out for yourself. New subscribers to the Path of Least Resistance receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the types of options and equity trades that are available by signing up for the Path of Least Resistance today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and selecting the newsletter tab. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. we got a couple of questions that have come in, so let's go straight to those. This one comes in from uh, Dan. Dan wants to take a look at, uh, hello, Steve, uh, Stevie, Perseverance Road. Got, you got it. You got it right, Danny. Uh, I have a very long-term position in IBM and have captured the latest move up from 132. I'm tempted to take, my, to take a short position by a push to define your risk. Can you tell me what you are seeing in the short term and what, uh, what the charts are suggesting to do with the stock? I had uh, dinner a couple weekends ago, uh, two 
Fridays ago with Bob Lord, his wife, Robin. Bob is uh, is the senior ex senior vice president of uh, the cloud, basically, cognitive solutions and that whole thing out there. And uh, so uh, I love to take a look at IBM. First on the daily time frame chart, look at this move. You, what, you, what you really want to love about this, uh, Dan, is that uh, today you've got this wide ranging bar and price is right above resistance. If this were going to break down, if you were going to take on a daily basis, if you were going to take that swing trade, what you needed to see was price not close above 152.95. 152.95 was its breakdown area. And this is suggesting on a daily basis that what we have inside of IBM is an absolute change in trend out here. Uh, so that's what I see on the daily. On the daily chart, do I see any other signal uh, to assist you? That don't, the signal in the daily chart is, no, don't take that put position. Now, if, if, if IBM sells off during the day and close of low 152.95, I would have a different uh, view. But right now, it's breaking above resistance out here. Now let me go take a look at the weekly time frame chart. The weekly time frame chart, uh, it's targeting 162. That is its breakdown resistance level. Now what we can see here is price is taken on a D point it's, it happens to be a B point, I should say. D happens to be happen to be the Chapman wave count. That that's since has now moved over to E out here. But it's taken on a swing point, a wide ranging bar. This may be a confirmed weekly A to B equals CD to the upside. Again, 162 is uh, even uh, is is the, even Stephen is the next level of resistance on a daily time frame. This is not suggesting taking a put position. If I look at the monthly time frame, well, what IBM did after remember we talk about how it's really important when you get these topping patterns, which this had um, three different roads momentum indicator topping signals telling us that sellers really at that 210 area were just ready to you know jump all over this. And But what they were able to do in the long term, you say your long term holder, is only push price back to its breakout level, which was 157.13. We've never seen two monthly closes below that area, and you now have a new monthly profile that formed this month in February, the bottom of which is 154.07 out here. On a monthly basis, Stevie's green line turned red. That suggests that price and that line are going to catch up to each other, probably in the 172 area. On a quarterly basis out here, let's switch to the quarterly time frame. What do we have for IBM? Uh, it's above its green line on a quarterly basis. That's strong. That's bullish, right? We talked about Stevie's oscillator and change line, uh, what, what green means, what red means, and so forth. So I, Dan, I, you know, nice trade out here. I know you've, you've got a long-term position. I've got to say stick with it. I, I, the charts are not suggesting to me any pattern that's uh, advantageous to you to go ahead and take some type of a put position. Now, let's go back, because I, I didn't do it on that chart, but let me do it over here, and let me put up IBM. Let's take a look at the volume from, no, it's only Wednesday, right? So you got to do a little bit, you know, let's just multiply times two. But the B point of the A to B equals CD is this bar, this bar being July 29th, the week that began, July 29th, there were 20, oh, son of a gun. So we don't have to wait. <laughs> it's only... It's only the middle of the day on Wednesday, and that has already been surpassed with volume. We're already at 23 million shares. So let's go ahead, and that doesn't mean there's not resistance at that uh, level that I gave you. There is, but you also now have an, a confirmed A to B equals CD. And price may stop at that uh, breakdown area on the weekly basis and just pull back a bit. That wouldn't necessarily be a reason to exit, but you now have a confirmed one-to-one, -one, A to B equals CD to the upside inside of IBM, suggesting 175 and change out there. So, um, you know, hope that helps you out, Dan, and uh, best of luck uh, with that uh, trade. Uh, so uh, let's go take a look at our next question. This one coming in from uh, JT. JT says, I'd like to buy more VDE is the uh, ticker symbol, VDE. And uh, so we're going to go help out uh, JT. And do you see a bottom pattern? So let's go take a look at this. We can see that uh, today, uh, day, why isn't this? Uh, hold on a second here. My apology. Reload all oh, historical data. Okay, that'll be helpful. So as we take a oh, I'm on the weekly. No wonder. No wonder. No wonder my daily chart wasn't matching my weekly chart. Hello. Duh. 
anybody home? Uh, apparently there wasn't anybody home. But I'm back. I'm back home. Now I've, now I've got it all figured out. So you're asking, is there a daily, is there a bottomy panel? Let's very specifically go answer that by taking a look at this uh, daily time frame out here. And what we know is, voila, two bottom patterns to be specific. One of those is wave number seven. That is letter G out there. So you got that. You actually got two of them on utilizing my uh, tools and my counts out there. You got a TD nine count bottom. That's a beautiful thing. And I could draw in an A to B equals CD pattern. I could draw in a, gar a uh, butterfly buy pattern. You got that signal today with that bull separating line. Now, JT, we've got a bottom. If this is only a counter trend rally, price will not be able to close above 74.8. Granted, it's touched that today and it's traded back below that. It's not the reason to sell, um, but it is a little bit of resistance. So if you're looking to, you'd like to buy more. So you're already in it to win it. If you're going to buy more, I would buy it one of two ways, either on a pullback and to try to give you that pullback area. Oh boy, that's a, you know, the, the, 71.32, that would be the bottom of the uh, new profile that formed uh, yesterday out there. That would be one possibility, probably not. Or when price closes over 74.08. It's just that you're so close to resistance out here um, that, you know, I, I can't, it, it can act, it's, resi it's resistance. And until it's crossed, until price closes over it, it remains resistance. So uh, you're on the right track, a definite bottom. On the daily time frame, just, just for the heck of it, let's go take a look at the weekly, see what its message is. Well, you're going to like the weekly, too. Uh, what's that guy from the uh, from that uh, suit place? You know, you're going to like you're going to like how you look, something like that. Well, you're going to like how you look in this right now. Price this week, price has been pushing lower, doing less relative energy right now. On of Wednesday, you've got a bullish reversal candle, the piercing candle out there. So you're getting your signal. I don't know what the candle will look like come month then. But you now have you asked the question, I think it was on the daily. We got a bottoming signal on the daily and certainly on the weekly. How about the monthly out here? Well, on the monthly price is pushing lower, doing less relative energy, but no signal yet other than price is pulling back into a hammer candle from back in 2016 out there. That low was established with a TD setup nine count pattern. That was uh, uh, bar number eight. And, um, you know, so as uh, thank you, Polar, as uh, as Mr. Zimmer from the uh, from the uh, what was it? The warehouse, the suits warehouse, the uh, I know that's not what it is, but you know what I'm talking. He says you're going to like the way you look. I think, uh, JT, you're going to like the way you look in ticker symbol V D E. So best of luck with that trade. So we're going to go to a break here, folks, in just a few minutes right now. Let's see what the markets are doing. Uh, you got the Dow up 357, S&P up 27. NASDAQ uh, finding a little bit of juice, just a little bit of juice. But it's been tired. It's been carrying the load. It's signaling back to everybody else. Hey, come on, catch up with me. I'm ready to cruise down Woodward Avenue. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you are in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in a Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. 
From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, folks. Dow's up 370, S&P up uh, 29 points. So we only looked at the uh, ES Mini earlier. We've gone through all the uh, questions, all the requests thus far. So let's go take a look at the other um, indices. Let's do this via the uh, futures contracts out here. So if we take a look at the NQ, uh, number one, uh, yesterday's wide-ranging bar, a close above Stevie's green line. That's priced at 92.82. Uh, if we get a second close above that, that's just a confirmation. Again, nothing more bullish than a rising price oscillator above zero. Those are the conditions right now. The only thing that uh, we would then do is go take a look for resistance while prices trade above all of its profiles, daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly out there. So that says we'd have to go to horizontal trading ranges to take a look where price might uh, be headed to. But at this stage of the game, everything inside the NQ on its daily basis is bullish. You're only in wave number two right now. Uh, inside of it on the daily time frame, uh, Basil likes to say that at a minimum they'll achieve four legs. So uh, that would suggest that that is moving higher out there. If we look at the uh, weekly time frame chart that move higher, uh, you can, now in the case in in the case of the NQ on the weekly basis, remember we were looking at the ES Mini and how it had closed below Stevie's green line on a weekly basis. Not the case at all inside the NQ. That's why it is so strong. I mean, it's showing us just simply the strength with inside of it. And now it's moved on. Uh, it is now in likely bar number seven. That is letter G. But this can extend uh, for a while out here. Uh, so the uh, weekly chart is uh, uber bullish as well. But look, folks, we do have call ahead seating. That means we've got to go right to our next caller out here, the first caller of the day. And that is Ron. Ron, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you? Great, Steve. Appreciate you taking the call. Uh, My two questions. You just talked about a stock that looked interesting, but I couldn't get the symbols. I I don't know if you said DVD or DBD or. Can you give me the uh, words so that I know what that means? I mean, the yeah, symbols, let me see I, I, I couldn't understand them. Yeah, yeah, sure. That was. Uh, let's see. That was coming in from JT. That was V is in Victor, D is in Dog, E is in Edward. V D E. Oh, V D E. Okay. Yeah. BDE. I, I was interested in David Boy David, if you would look okay. at that one. Absolutely. The, the other one look looks too nice, too, VDE, and I'll look at it. I just couldn't understand the no problem. The symbols. No problem. My, my, my apology. Uh, so if we take a look at uh, ticker symbol D, dog, B, Bob, D, dog, if we look for a uh, the type of bottoming signal that I like, I don't have that here. That doesn't mean it hasn't bottomed. Uh, I don't see anything wrong with it right now. It's trading um, at 12.09. Uh, chances are that this is headed towards 18.80. Um, as long as price stays above 7.12. Oh, that's the monthly chart. Uh, my apology. Um, yeah, monthly they, chart. They bring it out their earnings next week. Yeah. 
Uh, let me let me get to the daily chart here first. Uh, not that there was anything wrong with the monthly chart, as we said, there there really wasn't. On the daily time frame, uh, what you don't like, what you don't necessarily like, is that it could be in wave number seven. That would be letter G. Could be prices moving higher, doing less relative energy, right at an area where it had found a top before, which was the uh, January 10th uh, area. And so, in order for this to really get bullish, you need to see price close above the high of January 10th. That's your that's your resistance level. The next resistance level would be up at 1377. By the way, the high of January 10th is 1291. So that's been tested today. It's been rejected. You don't have a bearish reversal candle, at least not yet. If you were to receive that, that could be an indication that the earnings call isn't going to go so great and price might pull back to, uh, well, be 1182, but that's not that much further below where we're trading. 1101, 1059, 1017 would be the areas. Now, what we like about it on the daily basis, it did form a nice bottom back here. That was with the TD9 count. That was on January 28th. So that, in essence, or the following day, was your, your, was your buy signal into that. But it's right up in, in a resistance area. What are you thinking of doing, or are you a holder of this stock? Well, I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that there's some numbers are going to be good. Uh, they're in boots, and uh, I, I think they're, apparently their boot sales are really screaming. Okay. Okay. Um, look, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, no, no, I'm, look, I'm, it, you know, I'm thinking that there's there, it's an area that uh, kind of a consumer area that I think people will start to get more interested in. Okay. But okay. I don't know. I was just looking at it for yeah, thinking so, that their earnings so, are going to be good in, in next week. Right. So uh, my, my, my wish would have been that you were in the stock already uh, back here, uh, say, on January 29th versus today. It just the mere fact that it's moving higher, it's got that less relative energy signal uh, going, and we're up at an area of resistance, and you've got another level of resistance at 1377. Um, it just has me being cautious for you to enter okay. in that stock. On a weekly basis, a close above 1144 would be nice here at 1209, but we don't know what the close will be at the end of the week out here. And we had looked at the monthly earlier. I didn't see anything wrong with it. I didn't have that bottoming signal that I would have liked to have seen, but that's okay. Um, so okay, maybe I, I'm too late. Yeah, okay. I, I haven't got I, a well, position yet. I was looking at it and I was just gonna try it was. I, I tell you what I'd I, rather you do. I'd rather you take a position in uh, VDE. That chart yeah, that looked, looked much. <laughs> yeah, it just it looked okay. better than this chart. Thank okay. you. Appreciate that. You bet. Thank you. Uh, thanks so much for calling. That was Ron in uh, Denver, and uh, uh, so we've got a request to go take a look at uh, Coco out here. So uh, we will do that. Let me uh, get back over here. Let's see if we can find. Coco for Coco Cuckoo Puffs out here. Uh, so um, give me a second also. Give me C, C, space. Oh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do the continuous contract, Ruby, just so on my other charts, just so we can also take a look at the long-term patterns out here. But first, with regard to Coco futures, price is trading above the weekly profile, so that's good. Trading in between the box, the profile levels on the daily time frame. Uh, price is trading pretty near its point of control, the center of the box at 27.68 or 27.75. So it looks like a bit of a consolidation right now in between the top of the box, 28.28, and the bottom, which would be support at 26.47. That's what I see in taking a look at the daily and the weekly time frames. Now, let's come over here and take a look at uh, Coco. Again, this is the continuous contract. That's fine. Uh, it has to be. And the reason why I'm putting up, whoops, didn't mean to do that. The reason I'm putting up the continuous contract is so that what Ruby and I, you, all of us can do here. Why is this doing this? That is strange. It's always something. Let me, what the heck is, what the heck is going on here? Oh, I've got a bad tick. Look at that bad tick. So no wonder there's a problem here, Ruby. As much as I wanted to do, well, let's see what happens if I see if that bad tick is uh, also in the uh, March contract. If it is, it is, and we just have to go with the information. Yeah, it's there. So my apology, Ruby, I've got a bad tick, and there's no way I'm going to be able to get any kind of additional information from my other charts out there. So, And to fix that uh, during the uh, show here. Not, not going to happen. So, uh, but uh, it looks like a consolidation. We'll just leave it at that with regard to uh, with regard to uh, what it's doing on the daily 
time frame out there. Oh, did I just delete that? Son of a gun. So this is Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be back in just a few for the two-minute wrap-up. Basil Chapman will be hosting a 90-minute live webinar for subscribers to his daily trading service, The Opening Call, Thursday, February 13th from 4 till 5.30 p.m. Basil will host his live webinar titled The Dark Cloud Cover, an Essential Market Analysis. In this 90-minute webinar, Basil will discuss the techniques he uses when identifying market downturns using his Chapman Wave, including how he uses specific ETFs like the SMH Semiconductor ETF as a connection canary in the coal mine leading indicator when looking for market downturns. By identifying particular weaknesses in the market technicals, Basil is able to identify the severity of the market reaction, and this is just one of many topics he'll be covering. To sign up now for the opening call, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't miss out on this special 90-minute live webinar with Basil Chapman, Thursday, February 13th. Sign up today. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of the sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, Dow's up 402, S&P 31 points out there. Uh, so I think the best use of our time during this two minutes out here, let's go take a look at the weak links inside the market. That would really be the Russell 2000. So when we take a look at the Russell 2000. This generated that TD set up nine count bottom. It did it with bar number eight on Friday. Bar number nine was confirmed on Monday out here. Price is above Stevie's green line, which is 1667. As long as price closes above that, price should be targeting its TD nine count breakdown level, 1697. If you see the Russell 2000 close above 1697.10 to be exact out here, that is suggesting to you that it's change in trend, and it really never got to a change in trend, but that it has broken through a key level of resistance and should continue higher to go on and make higher highs out there, but that the weakest link out here generated a beautiful bottoming signal that confirmed on Monday. The Dow also arguably weak as well. If we take a look at the Dow, what has it done out here? Well, the Dow is trading right now above Stevie's green line. That is 28,939. 
Remember, the line is green, tells you that the price oscillator, the difference between the 19 and the 39-day exponential moving average is above zero. Now, that's what the green line means. When price is above a green line, that tells us we have a rising price oscillator above zero. And folks, other than picking the top tick out there, that is bullish. So we've just looked at the daily time frame charts for each of the four equity futures contract during the show. They're all traded above Stevie's green line. That's bullish. When we looked at the weekly charts, we didn't look at the weekly for everything here. Let me put this over here. Here's now the weekly for everything. You will see that all of these are also bullish out there. Be careful on the short side. I understand it with regard to the spot volatility index. But if it closes back below that upper Bollinger Band, odds favor that what it wants to do is head lower. And if it heads back to its 50-day exponential moving average, the markets will continue to move higher. It is as simple as that. Folks, stay tuned. My favorite polar bear, David White's up next after that. Tom O'Brien, and I'll see you back here on Thirsty Thursday. Take care. And have a wonderful Wednesday. Basil Chapman will be hosting